So we are streaming again. Hi, Tracy and May, Kevin, Albert, Checks and Balances, Dragon, uh, Stacy Lane, Huma, Real Night Writer, Aqua123, Sydney, DC, Lori. I see Penny said that I got 32,000 views on uh, Bigfoot. I mean, uh, Thunderfoot. Is Thunderfoot Fukushima literate or a shithead? Well, it's pretty obvious he's a shithead. Hi, Lori. Nuts for Art. Toxic. Stacy Lane. Yeah, thumbs up, folks. Just passing through. Jocelyn. Char. James Bond. Dragon 6. DC. Woo! There you go. I'm up and running. We're in good shape. Anybody's not familiar, takes a while few minutes to get rolling rocking weaving and we take everything head on here we don't mess around this is not a game this is for keeps it's the most amazing time on the planet to be alive uh, the very only time in human history that we have been able to have the great equalizer known as the internet and Semi freedom information. Hi, Candace, Mickey, it's the Stephen B. Still take a few minutes, folks, to get wind up. Hang on for it. Hi, Andy, Candace, Aqua, Michael, Broken Ass Islander, Lunar, Sergeant, Diver Dude, Stephen, Sedell, Kathy, Jerry. I know um, I seen just before I came on that. Uh, hang on. Amthurst, Stacy again. Jerry, Kathy, there you go, Mr. Galt, Amthurst, Bubba, woo, we got a big crew on the go tonight, 104 rolling already, we got a wild show for everybody tonight, woo, this ought to be fun, it's an extraordinary show, I think, and let me get that other one up here and running, I put a couple of links below to um, the voodoo doctor, Brian Hanley, the world's most disingenuous nuclear quack, 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 quack. And it's, you know, I don't know if he actually believes the stuff he's saying, but we're going to cover it all tonight and we'll just flush it out. I myself have a hard time with it. I got a whole lot of issues that's going to take a full hour to cover, unfortunately, but it should be a good laugh. I'm expecting a few good laughs out of this one. He's got seven videos he posted today that are 30 seconds to a minute long each. There's links below to his YouTube site. And you should watch every single one of those videos when you get a chance. Um, because it's extraordinary what he's saying. We're going to go through it right shortly here. We're almost up to the three minute mark. We're doing pretty good. Everything is synced up. Let's get rolling. Hi, Laurel Adams. Uh, I'll just say hi to a few more people. Sergeant James, Broken Ass Onler, Connie Grandma. Amthurs, thank you. Thumbs up, folks, she says. Omen, wait for a knock at your door. Tracy, Joe, Jim, uh, Stephen, James. Well, we got everybody. This is a good night for me. Mr. Galt. And let me see if there's anybody here I didn't get. Um, Nuber Magic was here, I see him. Chart, hi, Chart. Thank you. I seen you tweeted, everybody. I caught that one. It's been a busy day. They won't take my scooter back, my tricycle. It does nine kilometers an hour, but we'll get that straightened out. But that was a it was a rough day for me because I was quite surprised. I never used it. It's brand new, and they're giving me a hard time. The big Kalepo. I did a video about BOs. Very fake. I missed it. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Hi, aviator your show but I vote down the yellow thing oh that's the map you're talking about that I'm using that's the French plume that was just another one I put up there hi private sector so okay hi Pam I know I'm going through everybody tonight a little odd want to be live 24 mystic pieces we were rolling right through them all there that time starlight here we go Okay, so we're going to start this off with probably the most, let me make sure I'm lined up for everybody. It looked pretty good when the video was streaming there. 
You know what I mean? That's what we got to do. You know, people have to be held to account. And as we go through this tonight, you'll understand where I'm coming from. And as usual, I always, uh, I'm very cautious about everything that I say and everything that I do. Everything is vetted. There's no conjectures. Uh, sometimes we do go out there on that, but that's only because we have so much facts and supporting evidence and that that's, you know, we're just postulating, but it's not actually truly a conjecture. So we're going to start off tonight with some audios and then we're going to break each one down. They're short audios. There's a little bit of noise. So we snoozing already. And it always takes a second. So now we got to make sure it's not going to be too loud for you folks. Hang on. And I'll adjust it on the fly. Here we go with the first one. Oh, I better move that screen down so I can see everybody. And I think this is a really important. Uh, hi, Cats Alive, Reram, Nuda, Cucumber, Joe, Mommy, Mammy. Hi, Penny. Chart. So then let them get the chance to say hi to everybody. So here we go with the first clip. Everything looks good. Hang on. The name of this one on his site is How Much Radiation is Immediately Life Threatening? FEMA, if you stayed in the Start water, it again. Uh, currently in Japan, in the water right off the beach of Fukushima, if you stayed in the water for the whole day, you would, you would receive on the order of 10 nanosieverts in the course of the day. Uh, in other words, about 0.3% of the normal daily dose that everyone gets. Now, how is it you can get on the beach of Fukushima, stay in the water all day, and get less dose than everybody else gets? Does anybody have an answer for that one? Does anybody, does anybody know where he's coming from with that? He's talking about right in front of the plant where there's uh, up to 600 tons a day a highly radioactive water running over the hot coriums, the melted cores. The site had three detonations that sprayed rods all over that site, and so the isotopes are getting washed down into the bedrock 100 feet below, and then the natural river is also washing all of that out there. The site is spread with pieces of rods, so there's neutrons and x-rays, so it's creating its own isotopes. Its MOX fuel is 2 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. And Chernobyl was one-third the size of the reactors at Fukushima. It was a 30% meltdown. Fukushima had pools on the roof of it that are missing on a number of the, the reactors because it detonated and it blew those rods. Now, each pool had 122,000 rods. Each rod is uh, around 12 feet long. There's 80 in a bundle, 1,535 bundles in a pool. The cores are melted down 100%, and it hemorrhaged uncontrollably uncontrollably and there's links below to the pictures from the Fukushima 50 2000 pictures there's a fire releases down below where you can go check it all out uh, some of that's redacted but you can certainly read between the lines on that and there's millions of those there they're from the government's website they're all authentic and so for him to say that you're going to get less back less radiation than normal background insignificant radiation is quite a statement off the beach at Fukushima I mean that's a startling thing to say when you know you got all this all the, the uranium 234 235 the man-made stuff and I'll get to more of that here in a moment um. Um, so once again he's talking about if you're off the beach of Fukushima you'll get less than normal background radiation how is that even possible so let's go to clip number two did I get the volume up enough that time? Okay, we'll go up a little higher. Do you want me to play that clip again for you one more time? Well, let's play it one more time just in case everybody didn't get it. I'll go back to that clip. It's only like a 20 second clip, so. How much radiation is immediately life threatening? Let's play that clip one more time. Uh, currently in Japan, in the water right off the beach at Fukushima, if you stayed in the water for the whole day, you would, you would receive on the order of 10 nanosieverts in the course of the day. Uh, in other words, about 0.3% of the normal daily dose that everyone gets. Um, so he should go down there and shoot a video of him playing in that ocean all day. That'd be cool. 
I got no issues with that. We can raise the money for him if he wants to, I'm sure. I'm sure everybody will kick in for that one. <laughs> we'll call it a going away gift. <laughs> okay, here we go with the next clip. That was pretty loud. That was loud enough. First question, how? I'm sorry. So that, that one was... Is there any danger from Fukushima radiation coming across the ocean? The name of the video is Fukushima meltdown, a threat to United States. That's on his site and there's a link below. And he says, First question, how? It, it, it's, the, the distances are so vast. The amounts are, are, are not there. This is ridiculous. So the distance is too vast. The amounts are not there. And this is ridiculous. Well, the jet streams carry it at 100 miles an hour. Every 24 hours, that's 2,400 miles. So in, in uh, two and a half days, it's on the coastline of Canada and the United States. At the end of three days, according to the government's models of cesium-137, after 40 days, the entire northern hemisphere is covered 100%. And we've covered that many times on this site. There's many, many models out there from uh, the Norwegian Institute, uh, the governments of Switzerland, the governments of France, the governments of Canada. There's links below down to Health Canada where they flew through the plumes for 18 hours and they got massive readings. And that was just one day on the 19th and the 20th in an 18-hour period. And so the plume didn't just disappear. All those isotopes didn't just evaporate into thin air. And so it's a shocking statement to say that it couldn't make it over there. That's an incredible statement. And for him to say that there's not enough deer when all the pools are missing and a lot of that has melted down and a single gram will produce more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet, that gets carried up into the jet stream. It doesn't come down immediately and land. Lots of it does, but it all can't come down. There's too much of it. There's hundreds of tons. And when a gram produces more radioactive atoms, these are hot buckyballs because you sprayed the salt water in on the reactors. And there's a link below about that peer review study about that phenomenon of sulfur and how it ingests uh, uranium, plutonium, the weaponized stuff. And we're getting to more of this. That was loud enough, right? Hi, Christopher. We keep going. Just um, passing through. Yeah, we have instrumentation today that can detect, you know, single atom events if they, you know, if they arrive here. Right. And we detected 181 times uh, acceptable levels of iodine-131 in California. And for every three iodines-131, there's an iodine-29, which has a 15 million year half-life, so that's times 10. We have all the, you know, all the, hang on, I'll read a couple of them for us, just for the hell of it. Uh, we'll go 131, because there's tons of that. We had 100 times more than normal, what's acceptable. There's no such thing as normal, folks. And I'm going to get to that because he covers it a little bit. Wait for that to pop up there. Let me see. Canada Plume Model Studies, Health Canada. That was a cesium-137 we just talked about before. There was 40 million Beckwolves of iodine-131 in a single bed of kelp off Southern California. And so that means 10 million of them are iodine 129 with a 15 million year half-life and of course if the iodine came over the cesium the strontium the uranium plutonium had to come over too uh let me go for a couple let me hit two or three in a row here yeah ucb rooftop water exceeds federal drinking water iodine 131 threshold by 181 times look up that one doc Fukushima forecast shows cesium-137 and iodine-131 over northwestern U.S. on May the 5th. Look that one up, Doc. Vancouver, Canada radiation tests showed iodine-131 rainwater at almost 100 times above U.S. drinking water limits. Now, drinking water limits are 9,000 becquels of potassium-40, up to 90,000 becquels of potassium-40. And if you drink that you off-gassed 90,000 becquels of potassium-40. It's completely harmless, insignificant background radiation that should never be in these equations. It has no right whatsoever being used in the equation with E equals mc squared. Let me keep going with him now. 
it's um, it's remarkable that he says these things. Is what I find. But that's not harming anybody. You know, there, there, you know, there, there's there's single atom events happening in the body right now. 4,400 4, 4, disintegrations per second are happening in your body right now. So. So what? Um, so what? 4,400 background uh, potassium 40 insignificant normal. That should never be an equation. It has no right in this equation. If you took a glass of water with 4,400 decquels of cesium-137 and drank it, Doc, you're dead. If you took a glass with 4,400 becquels of strontium-90 and drank it, you die. If you had a glass with 4,400 becquels of uranium-234 and 235, the man-made weaponized isotopes, Doc, you would die. If you had a glass of any of these weaponized isotopes that we talk about, you die. Let me keep going. No. So he says, no. No worry. Can't come over here. If it does come over here, it can't hurt you. It's like background insignificant radiation. 4,400 times in your body. Why would you put that in that conversation? That's what drove me over the deep end of the day. Right? I mean, that's ridiculous that somebody could say something like that and think that that is valid. Uh, here's the next one. Is this book accessible to lay people? He's talking about his book. Uh, I guess in some, it, it, I didn't find it too hard. I, I spent a lot of time, you know, explaining things to people who are, who are not versed in, in it already. Right. And we are. Right. We're not gullible. We're not naive. And we're not lying. We're not making stuff up. We're not fabricating or misrepresenting anything. We're not talking about potassium 40. You won't hear us talking about that unless we're talking about someone like you who's misrepresenting it. Let me keep going because we, he's still got a page up there that we're going to get to after. And there's a link below to that page. And I'm going to cover that page of his equations because that's really important. Let's go to the next part. Um, so basically what I did was I, I just I explained it. And I don't think it's that hard to follow if somebody actually knows what they're talking about who explains it. Right. So when I explain it to you folks, you get it, right? Now when he explains it to folks, they don't know what they're talking about. And he says... I don't think it's too hard to get it because he's talking about potassium-40. He's not talking about real isotopes, right? Now, there's a 238 that's natural and indigenous to the ocean. A 234 that's natural and indigenous to the ocean. It's insignificant. It means nothing. But we're going to cover that after. So we've got to keep going on this one. Is media hyping Fukushima? That's the next one we're going to listen to. Here we go. Most of it, I think, is is ignorance. You know, journalists are not physicists. Journalists are not biologists, mostly. Um, Russian oil companies, I believe, are deliberately cranking up uh, uh, anti-nuclear activists and, you know, people who don't know any better um, with, you know, the Pacific Ocean is dying. You know, RT.com is the source of, you know, those graphs of the Pacific Ocean being covered with yellow and red. Uh, right, so he's he keeps going back to RT. How come he's not looking at the, all the peer review studies, the 3,900 peer review studies at Elsevier, not to mention Springer and Wiley, that he could go look at? He keeps referring to RT, so it's an attack upon Russia is what he's up to there. He seems focused and fixated on that. And then he uses that as the only model that exists which is the tsunami model is what he's alluding to, okay? Which got nothing to do with what we talk about here, unless we're talking about Thunderfoot or Dr. Brian here. Radiating from Fukushima. Radiating from Fukushima. Oh, that's an interesting uh, statement. So if it's not an issue, what do you mean by radiating from Fukushima, Doc? Um, they're the source of stories that are asking, well, are plovers dying in the Pacific? I don't know what due that means. To Fukushima, seals dying in Alaska, and their motive is obvious. They're making billions. Now. So he like he blames that all on Russia. He's like Russia making all that up. Russia picked it up from everybody else. 
RT picked that up from everybody else. I'm not, I'm not protecting RT. I'm just saying they picked that up from everybody else. Everybody talked about that. New York Times talked about that. The Washington Post talked about it. Everybody freaking talked about it. But he's fixated upon Russia. Selling oil to Japan because oil shut down the nuclear power plants. As a so what do you think? They shut down their plants for something to do. They shut it down because that country wanted to shut down. They had to get oil from somewhere. That was cheap oil. The PR thing. Uh, what's ironic about that is that those guys, the, 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 the burning the, of fossil fuel is what's actually creating most of the things they're pointing at. So he always slams his hand on the table. So he's done, he done all these videos right fast in a row and popped them up, little short videos. Sounds like a telephone call because the person who asks him a question is such a low voice you can't even hear it. And so that's why I had to do all the explaining. But to blame it upon all the, the, the carnage, right, from the animals, he's blaming that up on global warming. Right over the top, man. This guy is off in his own little world, okay? He's not playing by anybody's rule book including his own. He's just making it up as he goes along. There's 90,000 bunker-burning fuel ships on the ocean. These are the container ships with 5,000 transport trucks on their decks and everything else. They, one of those ships produces more pollution than 50 million cars. That's more cars in Canada, Australia, New Zealand combined. 16 of those ships produces more pollution than all the automobiles on the planet combined. 90,000 of them is equivalent to 42 trillion people on this planet in automobiles every day, right? 42 trillion automobiles. That's the equivalent, the animosity equivalent. And so he doesn't look at stuff like that, you know, as pollution. It's your tin cans, your pop bottles, and your plastic. So, like, he's playing by his own rules, and he's making them up as he's go. Most hyped danger of Fukushima, this is nothing special, but we'll throw it out there anyway. What is the most hyped danger of radiation? It's such a low voice, right? We'll just keep What's going here. Hi, Darren. That you're going to die, that you're going to get cancer. Yeah, you very well might get cancer. Go look at my Thunderfoot video and you can see all the charts there, Doc. That your life is over. No one said our lives are over. We just said our way of life is over. The planet is irradiated. It's completely irradiated now because of the plumes. The American cesium-137 model shows that 40 days the entire northern hemisphere is covered. That was just on cesium-137. You can't have cesium-137 for Fukushima without 30 times more strontium-90. 30 times. So if they put in all the strontium-90 and all the uranium and all the plutonium daughters into that model, you wouldn't even see the planet Earth. It really truly is like that. It doesn't just disappear. Die. That you're gonna. Let me get that last bit. Here, you hear that little click at the end. That's where he goes, right? And then he does the next clip. Get cancer. That your life is over. That the ocean is gonna die. Yeah, the ocean. The ocean is gonna die because let me explain that to you, Doc. You know your potassium forty or forty four hundred becquels. That's uh, decaying in your body, you know, every moment, as you like to say. Well, if I took a big old swimming pool and I took a bucket of potassium-40 and dumped it in there, say it's a swim pool of salt water from the ocean, and in, and in a glass full of that salt water in that swimming pool, if you took it out, there's around 75 to 100 million phytoplankton, and they make oxygen, and they are the base of the food chain. Now, if I was to dump his potassium-40 into it, nothing would happen. But if I was to dump a five-gallon bucket of the radiation from Fukushima, all those phytoplankton will die. You can take that swimming pool and dump it into a lake of salt water full of phytoplankton and all the other creatures, hundreds of trillions, well, 10 to the power of 100,000 tiny itty-bitty creatures, it would fry all of them. And you could redo that into pond after pond after pond for the life of those isotopes. That's that's the difference. Now, if you dumped his stuff in there, the the normal indigenous background radiation, nothing will happen to those phytoplanktons or the other creatures or the food chain. But what you also created was no oxygen in that water by dumping the highly radioactive isotopes from Fukushima. You killed all the oxygen 
in that swimming pool of salt water, then you kill all the oxygen when you dump that into a pond of salt water, then you dumped all that into a bigger pond of salt water, and the radioisotopes don't stop putting out energy. They fry all that phytoplankton like popcorn. It's, it's uh, really something else. So let me keep going. We haven't got much here to go through. What do you want people to take from away from your book? Now, he's got a book. You can find it up on Amazon. Number one, it's far less of a problem than most people think. Yes, there are, there are issues if you, if you have significant doses, but significant doses are not what most people are, are going to get exposed to. Well, American models show the entire Northern Hemisphere covered, not only the Americans, but Switzerland, Norway, France, Canada, many, many countries, many, many peer review studies, many, many models, Many, many uh, reports from academic. Like I say, elsewhere has got 3,900 studies on Fukushima that locked away in the ivory tower that you pay for. That your money paid for those institutions, paid for those professors' tenor, paid for those experiments, paid for all the students, paid for the lights, the heat, the power, paid for the peer review at other institutions to do those, uh, to redo those studies to make sure they were authentic. And then they were locked away. Your copyright is given away to a handful of corporations. And I covered that that last night in Jacko's video. He's the previous, um, he was the previous NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, during Fukushima. I messed up that video a little bit last night with the audio, but I could only do the audio so much and then it degrades and I had to go redo it over and over. I had to go back to the original audio that wasn't too bad and, and just put it up there, otherwise it would have lost it. So we're winding. Um, we have a lot of, we have a large body of knowledge that's coming from radiation oncology now that we didn't have, you know, in the 1950s. This is not 1950s, man. Everybody had access to so much information in the last eight and 10 years. Why are you treating like today is the day that we finally got the information? I've been studying uranium-238 because of wars for almost eight years straight. And you're going to equate a potassium-40 in your body with the radiation from Fukushima is unbelievably uh, disingenuous and deceitful. Let me go down to the end of it. There's, we're almost finished just now, so we're going to jump over to his story. And there are things you can do and that you can discuss with your doctor if you're getting radiation therapy that can improve the effect of the radiation therapy. No, you can't, man. You can't get... Look, radiation therapy kills all the cells in your body and because if you leave one cancer cell alive, it reappears. And then they hope you'll recover. It's the most hideous way to treat cancer imaginable. Uh, there's a link below to DCA. But you can't treat, you know, something that... with something that caused it in the first place. Radiation causes cancer and then you try to treat it with radiation. And your success, success rate is zero. It's zero by doing it that way. There is no hope. You might go into remission because you killed all the cells in your body, but you don't really have a body anymore. You don't have DNA anymore. You just murdered all the cells in your body, and they try to keep you alive. Your food has no nutrients in, nutrients in it. The GMO has all the nutrients and all the minerals engineered out of it and has toxins engineered into it. It has, no, it has no potassium, no magnesium, no calcium. You need 428 corn on the cob of GMO to equal one organic corn on the cob just for calcium. That's, in, that's incredible, unbelievable, unimaginable. Um, okay, so that's, that's all we got for that part. And now we're going to go over to his... To his um, story radiation in the ocean and Fukushima and we got a link below for that one Geiger counters in the hands of citizens found 150 counts per minute coming from the ocean and by Brian Henley <coughs> he said let's start by doing the math well first off it was around 1200 counts a minute well, one Becquerel is one decay event per second. So divide counts per minute by 60 and you have Becquerels detected. 
this article detected 2.5 becquerels. But in your body, on a normal day, you have 4,400 becquerels. See? Do you got any idea how insane that is? How ludicrous it is to equate the natural indigenous background radiation that's in your body that has nothing to do with E equals MC square. 4,400. If you had 4,400 becquerels of cesium-137 decaying in your body a second, it'd be because you were on a nuclear waste site. Right? That's how different. The difference is inconceivable. You can't drink the highly radioactive material and equate that with potassium-40. Why are you doing that? Why would you do that? How come you're... And, you know, this site here, at the bottom this morning, the first comet there with all the lakes and everything, had his history. And that's gone. The university went to, all the places that he gave lectures to, all of it's gone. He took it all down before we got here tonight. Unbelievable. That's okay, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I screen captured everything this morning right away so I got it there somewhere but I couldn't find it tonight that's okay I got another way of going about it so 4400 becquels per second in your body again in his article and this is his Fukushima like what has this got to do with Fukushima does anybody have any concept of what this could possibly have to do with Fukushima the potassium 40 I mean this is the Thunderfoot routine right this is the J Cullen from the University of Victoria routine. This is the same routine that Ken Buesler from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution uses. It's literally the same exactly routine. But like this guy actually believes it. He's in the comments section on the videos arguing with everybody this morning. No, no, you gotta go read the article. Well, we're reading the article, okay? Here it is. So why is there radiation found near the ocean and five times what's on land? Really? Five times what's on land. Most people have no idea there are 3.2 tons of natural uranium in every cubic kilometer of ocean. Well, you're looking at around uh, 4.5 billion tons, right? Per cubic kilometer. That's what it would weigh. And out of that, you can extract 13.34 tons. Now, 4.2 billion tons of uranium in it. So the ocean has 4.2 billion tons of uranium in it. This is natural rate uranium. Like the uranium they're going to use for weaponized product, uh, nuclear weapons, is the concentrated rate, uh, uranium in Earth, big chunks of it. And so when they mill that down out of 100 pounds, it's like 0 0.08 gets actually used for weaponized. And the rest of it turns into yellow cake and uranium-238. And if he had a Dixie cup of uranium-238 left over from that process, that's what they use for bullets in Iraq where they fired 2.5 million depleted uranium rounds a month in every home and every school and every university and every institution and hospitals and food distribution centers into the land, into the farmer's field, into every aspect and every facet of everybody's life in Iraq and Afghanistan. By the way, you got 5 million orphans in Afghanistan to get uh, 11,000 Taliban. So yeah, when you go near the ocean, you find radiation, but it's always been there. See, the radiation we're talking about got nothing to do with the radiation you're talking about. The radiation you're talking about got nothing to do with what we're talking about because it's potassium-40, it's uh, polonium-210, it's uranium-235, which should never be na named uranium-235 because that's got nothing to do with the 235 from nuclear fission and nuclear chain reactions, right? It's got nothing to do with it. So why is he talking about it? Why is he propagating that? And why is he pushing that out there? And his book is targeted to cancer victims on top of that. So he's misleading cancer victims. This is the most despicable thing imaginable. This guy is targeting cancer victims with unbelievable uh, disinformation. Totally inappropriate. These are victims. These are victims, and he's out there making money. Hey, buy my book. I'll tell you the truth, he's saying. I find it hard to believe that someone like this exists, but there it is. There's also potassium-40 in the ocean. What has that got to do with Fukushima? Fukushima doesn't make potassium-40. Reactors can't run on potassium-40, man. 
I don't know what planet you're coming from. There's also radium. What has radium got to do with this? And polonium-210. What has that got to do with plutonium? Not polonium now, but plutonium-238, 239, 240, and 241 from Fukushima. With a 24,000 year half-life that is murderous. That if you had a Dixie cup of it in a restaurant, you'll kill everybody there in an hour, every hour, for 24,000 years. And if it was uranium in a little tiny cup, you would kill everybody in that restaurant every hour for 4.5 billion years. But the uranium you're talking about is insignificant, unimaginably insignificant. It's garbage. It should never be mentioned in a conversation. It's the only mention in the conversation to confuse and deceive people. It's never meant to inform people. It has no purpose. And yet he has articles and books and cancer lectures and everything else where he's telling people about that. And then he got this story up there. Like the spaghetti sauce, your name it. It's in there. And it's perfectly fine. It's in your sea salt. Uranium-234-235 from weaponized military industrial complexes is not in my salt. Well, it might be now from Fukushima. But I wasn't there indigenously. It's not there naturally. And they can't sell it legally if it is there. See? Or 238. Or the plutoniums. Or the strontiums. Or the cesiums. Or any of the other byproducts and daughters from Fukushima. He says, and it's perfectly fine. So San, this is a good one. San Francisco Bay is 400 to 1,600 square miles, depending on what part is used. Now, mind you, there was 45,000 barrels dumped off the coastline of San Francisco, 30 kilometers out. That's like 19,000 gallons, which reminds me, you have to eat 19, 19 million uh, gallons, rather. You have to eat 19 million bananas in a second to get the same amount of radiation from a single isotope from Fukushima. Because potassium-40 got nothing to do with the radiation we're talking about. He says the depth of San Francisco Bay varies, but its average is 15 feet deep. And so now he's got the equation 15 feet divided by 528, or 528 of a mile. It's 0.00284 miles deep. Blah, blah, blah. 2.84 cubic miles of seawater. Seawater average is 13 tons of natural uranium, which got nothing to do with the conversation. It's not went through the chain reaction. You wouldn't be able to mill it. If you could, you'd be getting all that stuff at Fukushima and at Hanford. You'd be recovering those 45,000, 45 gallon drums off San Francisco. You'd have to go down and decontaminate. You can decontaminate everything. You'll be, you would be the best man on the planet if you can de come up with a solution to get all the natural or the the weaponized isotopes out of anything, right? Out of anything, you can make a fortune. And you always will. So he's got nothing but equations. He goes right down, natural uranium-235, suitable for making bombs, ignoring uranium-234. So let me run that by you again. <coughs> he's talking about San Francisco Bay, and now he throws in the equation, natural uranium is uranium-235. The uranium-235 we talk about, and that you should be talking about, 235, is only made at nuclear production, at the chain reaction or fission. Right? That's the signature. That isotope will burn you. That will kill you for 4.5 billion years. If you eat, if you drink 4,400 beckles of uranium-235 from the weaponized military-industrial complex, you won't be giving any more lectures, so maybe you should go give it a try first. And so then he equates it down, 80% enriched uranium, pound each is, pounds for bombs, 5.371 bombs, blah, blah, blah. On a normal day, San Francisco Bay has enough uranium-235 dissolved into it to build at least five Hiroshima-sized bombs. It's natural, insignificant, Background radiation. You couldn't make a bomb out of it you want to. The equation is there that you could probably do something like that. There is no peer review study of anybody even trying to attempt to or even consider doing something like that. So why are you talking about it? Why are you glorifying insignificant uranium-235 with weaponized military-industrial complex isotopes? It's beyond me. 
and probably anybody else watching this. Hi, Ben. Hi, Jesus. Yamato. Hey, Jesus. Cancer takes a long time to grow, you stupid moron. Like, I can't believe someone like you actually exists. Uh, only to be salacious. Yeah, just spam them, folks. So what's coming from Fukushima? The average person here is Beckwell numbers. I can't believe someone like you really truly exists, Jesus. Remember when Fukushima killed 70 million people? Well, you better hold your breath for a few years there, buddy boy. They just announced cancer was going to increase by 70% for starters. We got all the models, man. It doesn't kill you right away, you moron, you dummy. You're just a dummy, man. I can't believe people like you actually truly exist. It's really sad, boy. Like, how can you even consider saying something like that? When you know bloody well uranium and all this stuff takes a few years for the cancers to start growing. It takes probably four years for you to notice it. It takes a couple of years no, for you I'm to realize... You 70 million people? Well, you better hold... <laughs> right, that's uh, Thunderfoot probably himself now with another ghost account. A little coward. We got 32,000 views on the video. You coward. I'm not finished with you yet. Don't think I am. Don't think I am. Hang on. It'd be slow that I ever gets me hand on you, dear uh, stupid. So let me go back to the story. After it deals with this monkey. There you go. Bye bye, monkey. So here we go again. I'll leave his page up. I'll send it off to someone. We'll find out who his ad IP address is yet. So the average person hears Beckwell numbers and don't have the background to translate them into meanings. There are also wild exaggeration, like 70 million people will have died from Fukushima like that dummy had put there. They got cancer. 70 million with cancer, dickhead, is more accurate. I mean, that's, that's Thunderfoot, right? There's nobody else out there stupid enough to say something like that. Only Thunderfoot. He's literally the only person out there we know that's stupid enough to repeat that more than once. There are also wild exaggerations, mostly from RT. Do you got any idea, man? Go over to E and E News and type in study. Go over to E and E News and type in CCM 137 models. Go over to E and E News and you'll get the links to all the mainstream media, peer review academic studies from institutions and universities and professors you can ever wrap your mind around. They link right over to them. You can spend the next six weeks there and you won't get through half of them or a quarter of them on any subject you chose if you go read through everything. And so once again here he is equating it because Russia is selling oil and natural gas to Japan to replace Japan's nuclear power. Japan closed the nuclear power themselves because the people got around 300,000 beckles from one end of the country to the other end of the country of weaponized military industrial complexes, isotopes. Remember, they don't need MOX fuel to make power, okay? MOX fuel is made from nuclear weapons from Russia, by the way. And they took these weapons that had been sitting in silos for 30 or 40 years and they got them over there and they mill them back down again. Uh, literally the worst, the worst article I ever read in my life. Hang on. So Russia, 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 Russia conflict of interest. Russia wants money. Blah blah blah. So here he goes. Report, reported TEPCO figures are 20 to 40 trillion beckwells. RT published 15 quadrillion, which is a thousand million million billion, as escaping from Fukushima. It's a wild exaggeration. You got three melted cores, man. They blew their tops. They detonated. They threw shit a couple of miles in the air. They covered the site in broken rods. It's unprecedented. We've never seen nothing like on this on this planet, period, ever. Every time it rains and every time it snows all over that country, it's radiating, sending all that radiation out into the ocean and evaporating it back up and liberating it into the environment. And so it's so disingenuous of what you're saying. It's repulsive. It truly is. That's why we're here tonight. He says, um, re measuring radiation in Beckwell is like measuring sugar in the kitchen by the molecule. 
and blah 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 blah. So he says the av- you have to divide a grain of sugar eleven thousand times to equal one of the always one of the Beckwells. This is how he equates it. If you ingest any of those isotopes coming over, you're getting cancer. If you ingest any of the isotopes he's talking about, you off gas it because it's potassium forty, and that's what the body does. It regulates it like a thermostat regulates your house or a cruise control regulates a car. You would have to break one grain of sugar in 11,000 pieces and take one of them to put your finger on 15 quadrillion sugar molecules. These are molecules he's talking about. We're talking about radioactive atoms. We're talking about radioactive particles. We're talking about radioactive isotopes. And one isotope is putting out energy till the end of time. If I took one of those isotopes and put them in a glass of water, if I took a uranium-235 that's man-made, not the crap you're trying to blow down everybody's throat. If I had a glass of water with 75 million to 100 million phytoplankton at creatures in a salt water, and I dropped an isotope in that, I'd kill every one of them. If I dumped that into a liter, I'd kill all the, the phytoplankton in that, the 400 million, not to mention the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of other creatures. They all fry. That thing puts out energy till the end of time. It doesn't become solutable in water. If you read the article below about peer review study on the sulfur, that stuff, the buckyballs, don't even become salutable. And that is raining down on the communities and being re-liberated through convection and evaporation, through just walking in the grass. It really truly is like that. But it's not going to drop you on your knees and kill you. It'll give you cancer. It'll, it'll go after your autoimmune deficiencies. It'll create these things with you. It, it will... You know, 50 Beckwells of this kind of radiation that we're talking about will cause permanent lesions on your organs. 500,000 Beckwells of the stuff he's talking about can't hurt a flies. You know what I mean. So, you can't smell it, you can't see it, you can't taste it. That's why they wear all that equipment. That's why they got Yucca Mountain. That's why they're trying to build sarcophagus to put it away because it's never supposed to be released into our environment because it's got nothing to do with indigenous insignificant background radiation. That's why they have all these facilities that are trying to deal with it and, and to find ways to deal with it even though they can never deal with it. This is why they dump it in the ocean because it's too toxic to have anywhere else. They, they hide it out there where it destroys our ocean. Like, for him, he's suggesting that no matter what happens at a nuclear plant is completely harmless. He's literally suggesting that. Which goes against every single study on the planet. But he's asserting that. It's unbelievable. You cannot detect that radioactivity from Fukushima with your Geiger counter. Of course you can, man. What do you think the governments do all over the planet? How do you think they detect it? How can you say stuff like that? Yeah, you got to get certain Geiger counters calibrated for certain isotopes. You could do that. But you can you can detect the gammas and the betas with your Geiger counters, but that doesn't mean you know what you're detecting. I mean, they're made for just normal background radiation anyway, but that doesn't mean you won't pick up the high readings from these hot particles. There was 1,501 radioactive atoms in a cubic meter of air in California in March of 2011. Everybody in from the west coast of Canada to the United States and Seattle were breathing in 10 hot buckyballs a day. 10 hot radioactive particles a day. One radioactive hot particle in your body will give you cancer, will give you a tumor. The radioactive material he's talking about don't even produce isotopes. It's just background radiation. It's got nothing to do with isotopes. He should never mention it. And we got to find out what university he went to and we got to hound that university to correct this person or take his degree away. I'm sick of it. Radiation is everywhere, always. You can't even get away from it, and that's just fine. Enjoy the ocean. It always has tons of radioactivity stuff in it. Always will. Right? San Francisco Bay got enough uranium in it to make five Hiroshima bombs. No, it don't, man. No, it don't. You don't have the technology to get it out. It's insignificant. Any volume of the planet will give you the same amount of radiation, insignificant background radiation. What you're doing is not only misleading, but you're, you're, 
you're giving lectures and you're encouraging people with cancer to read your stuff. And it's total fable. Everything is fable. And we just went through your stuff. It's all fable. You're making it up as you go along. That's unforgivable. It's unimaginable. Hi, Miss Milky. Miss Milky's officially retiring. And as a present for her, Patrick Henry is going to get my little eyeballs on him real soon. He's already out of my links below. Going to get some good old stomping from Dana. He has it coming. Piss me off. Wasn't for Miss Milky, he'd still be out there with 100 subscribers. She built him up. Everybody took her videos that she put up of him and redone and spread it out. All she's ever done was helped him. That's it. And he, he's going to get it. <laughs> it's common. Because I'm I still been a little bit of rage about that. That pissed me off when I seen that video. Dirty bugger, boy. I got a tick skin myself. I look forward to people attacking me. Right? Makes my day. <laughs> Makes my day when people attack me because I got right on my side. I got knowledge. I got uh, vetted information on my side. I got the models. I got the studies. I got the academic. I got it all because that's what I do. Is I vet it. I source it. I make sure it's accurate. I make sure it's real. I make sure I'm not going to leave myself open for attacks. Because if I make a mistake, that'll be used to bludgeon me till the end of time. If they go and make mistakes, they sell books up on Amazon and they give lectures all over the place. As long as they keep making that mistake. I'm not willing to sell out. I'm not going to sell my soul. You can't buy me. You can't threaten me. You can't intimidate me. You can't coerce me. I will die before I become disingenuous or dishonest like Dr. Brian Henley. There's no way I could do that. It's not me. I don't have the capability to fabricate it for a paycheck. He can make a lot of money doing what he's doing. They'll push him out there. And we don't we, we, we don't need people like that out there lying to everybody. It's the most dangerous thing imaginable. When he's lecturing and he's suggesting that people with cancer should read his stuff and take it to heart. When he just told all these lies is the most uh, heartbreaking thing imaginable. When he has his degree. And so we got to. He took that stuff down off this site here. That I'm on right now. Where I was just reading all that stuff. Because it, it said the university where he graduated. All the places where he's lectured. The places he's involved with. I got. I already got it this morning. I just don't know what I got done with it. Uh, because I had a few issues today. Because we got a. I got a new tricycle. I know everybody's laughing when I say that one. It's a tri electric tricycle right. And so I'll put eight batteries in it, and I'm good for around 50 or 60 kilometers. It's very quiet. I really enjoy it. Do about 30 kilometers an hour, and um, it's just it's just nice where there's no gas and there's no noise. Um, and it only does nine kilometers an hour. And I said I want to send it back, and it won't take it. I haven't even put a mile on it because it doesn't work, and it's just chaos for me today. And so I had to get back here, get set up. I was listening to lectures all day. And there is one more part here i got to cover. Hang on, I'll come over and say hi to everybody. Okay, I just want to cover that one more time. On a normal day, San Francisco Bay has enough uranium-235 dissolved into it. What, did you pour it in there? No, it's natural. It's always been there. It's everywhere on this planet. You know, it's so disingenuous to use for the academic world to call normal background radiation uranium-235 because uranium-235 is from nuclear production. And if you had a glass full of it and you drank it, you wouldn't need 4,400 backwards to mess your brain up. You will melt your organs with that stuff. If I had a piece of the rods from Fukushima that are missing, that are turned to radioactive atoms the size of a banana... Right, I have to eat 19 million bananas in a second to get the same amount of radiation from a single isotope from that stuff because that stuff is irrelevant. It's insignificant. I can fill the building up with bananas. I can't get cancer. I can take a bath in the ocean every day and natural uranium-235 can't hurt me. But if I put uranium-235 from the military-industrial complex into it, 
game over. You won't even make it into the room, let alone get into the bathtub. And you can kill everybody on the planet with that same bathtub. But you can take a bath or swim in the ocean every day. But you can't swim off Fukushima Beach, buddy. I don't know what kind of planet you think you're on. But you can't do that. We'll pay for your trip to Fukushima, man. Any friggin' time you want to go. You will pay for it. Make no mistake. We won't be going with you. <laughs> but we'll pay for it. If you want to go down there and shoot the video. Anytime you want to go, buddy, contact me. We'll we'll have a fundraiser for you, I can assure you. No, I'll be right onto that. You have no idea. I'll be knocking on doors with a little cuff in my hand. Hey, we got to send the crazy down to Fukushima. <laughs> hey, Japan will take you. They'll say, yeah, come on, man. You can go work in the plant after. Along with all the homeless that they take off the streets because there's no men down there. And they murder them and throw them away like trash. There's playgrounds down there you should go hang out, Doc, with a million beckles per cubic or per square meter. Playgrounds after decontamination. And every time it rains, that rises because the isotopes from all over that area, because there's a lot of really hot particles have made it way past Tokyo. Tokyo is 300,000 beckles of cesium-137, which means there's 30 times more strontium-90, which goes straight into your muscles, straight into your bones. If it doesn't get sequestered right away into your organs, but 50 becquels of this radiation will cause permanent damage to your organs. 50 becquels of background radiation, say, you know, these isotopes are in the ground, that kind of background radiation, 50 becquels, of the military industrial weaponized isotopes, yeah, you're, you won't last much longer because it destroys your body living in that environment. The entire northern hemisphere was saturated with uranium, with plutonium daughters, with the strontium daughters, with the cesium daughters. And, you know, night after night we have to come here and do this. And that's what we got to do. And that's how we learn. That's how we work out how they're doing it. That's how we work out the lies, the manipulations, the deceptions. Is we break it down for everybody. And that's the best we could do right now. Until we get in the studio. Then we'll call these buggers up. Give them a chance. I would like to get them in the conversation so bad. I can't wait to get that studio running. So I can phone up all of these people and try to get some of them. And I'll be on the phone so much. I bet you within two weeks I'll be booked up for a couple of months. It'll be fantastic. We'll take the good ones with the bad ones. I don't care. I'll call them all. And anybody that bites will accommodate them. So there you go. That was a... Um, interesting ride as far as I'm concerned that I had to get off my chest 57 minutes quite the wing ding we'll say hi and goodbye to everybody this is the end of her I know most times I beat around the bush a lot but 57 minutes hi sweet Jane thank you hi Annie Beck awake no that's for our James Bond DC Tracy uh, real night writer Ben Wool, bananas and bucky balls and battling them back to Japan. I like it. I like it, Ben. That's pretty cool. Hi, Hugh, Matt. Um, 2012, Maya. Thank you. I've seen your comments over on Dr. Quacker uh, video. That was pretty good. You got used to it, did you? Hatrick Penny done a lot of good work. And he got a chance, he's got this habit of coming out and demonizing everybody. Because they don't suck on his uh, shoulder. Because they don't mimic his words. Because I think a picture says more than an email. But I'm not saying they're not important. I don't need the email to know building four is destroyed. You know what I mean? I don't need an email to know unit three is melted right down to the ground. There's 2,000 pictures below. You can go download and look at them yourself. To me, it's not the most important thing on the planet. It doesn't get me anywhere. It's just like all the other emails, the climate gates, all the other ones. They never went nowhere. They never done nothing. It was a distraction. It was useless. It ain't going to crack anything. Hardcore facts like this, hardcore stories, hardcore pictures in the videos. Yeah, that changes the game, right? Thanks, Kathy. Miss Milky. 
That's for art. Candace, thank you. Penny, hi. And we'll get everybody after Missing Sky, of course. Uh, we love Miss Milky. You're a sweetheart. And I know the difference, see? Stetson, hi Stetson, thank you. Always glad to be able to say hi to you because I usually got to go in every night, man, and uncheck you from the Google when you Google Plus me out there. I got to go in every night right away and uncheck you. I don't know why you are always like that. Hi Laurie, thank you. Albert, awake. Yell, say Kate. Hi Kate, thank you. Checks and balances. Mystic Pizzas, Annie Beck, Tracy May, Mickey, Huma, Broken Ass Honor, Stevie B, Stacy Lane. You know, Paul, look at me, I'm here clapping like a lobster. Because <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing sometimes when I'm like at the end of the show. Because I know this is in the way, and so sometimes I'm here and I look at the video after, and nobody can see me waving. And I'm like, people probably wonder what the hell I was doing there. Okay, Toxic, thank you. Good night, everybody. Visolo, Missing Sky, and I can't get to everybody. Darren, Lori, James. Sydney, Miss Milky again, Nuts for Arts, Kathy, Candace, I covered all of it. And it looks like we done good tonight. I think we did. We had no choice. They never left us no choice. If they're going to come out and equate potassium-40 with the military-industrial complex as weaponized isotopes that are only used for uh, directed energy weapons, and which is going to hurt people anyway, and they use uranium-238 to fire in poor people's countries that's, that's left over. And so you'll get all of those isotopes because the bullets, all those bullets are dirty bombs and they're x-rays and neutrons, right? That's the worst thing imaginable. And you can see a video up on my site, Dr. Doug Rorke, he'll break that down for you. Thank you, Pam. And Dwayne, Lisa, ah, huh? forgot you that time. Aviator, big goofy grin to all. I'll give you a big grin for Aviator. <laughs> we'll catch you folks tomorrow night.